Today we'll dive into one of the most talked about policies in the 2020 election, health care. What does Medicare for All actually mean and what's a public option? How do the candidates plan on achieving their health care plans and what will it cost Americans? We'll discuss all of this today on The Ballot Box. There's no doubt that healthcare is the most debated and complex policy in the 2020 race. Numerous polls showed that healthcare was the number one issue for voters in the 2018 midterm election. And support for universal healthcare is slowly but steadily on the rise. A 2017 study by Kaiser found that 53% of Americans support getting their insurance from a single government plan. This compares to only 40% who favored it in the early 2000s. Healthcare is also a significant cost every month for Americans. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, healthcare costs an average of $10,000 per person annually. And a 2018 study revealed that a family of four paid an annual rate of $28,000 in total medical costs per year. Medicare for All, otherwise known as single payer, is a government-run healthcare insurance program where everyone is automatically covered. Countries like Canada, France, and the UK have modeled their healthcare after this type of system. With a single payer plan, Americans would automatically be enrolled and would pay for it through taxes. This means coverage would include premiums, deductibles, co-pays for doctor visits, hospital stays, and prescription costs. Under this plan, private insurance would shrink substantially or disappear altogether. The pros to this kind of policy is in its entirety of coverage, regardless of age or income. Everyone pays into the system and everyone benefits. The cons are that it would take a massive restructuring of the government's role in health care, with significant change to our current system and economy, and it would take years to fully implement. A public option is a bit more complicated because it includes both public and private insurance. This is a policy that keeps private insurance intact but provides a government-funded option for those who'd like to opt in. This policy is also paid for by taxing the public but needs less tax revenue because it's essentially insuring less people than a Medicare for All policy would. The pros are its likelihood of implementation. Because it's a steady change over time, there is less risk and more likelihood that it'll pass in our highly partisan Congress. The cons? A public option would leave private insurance intact, with some who could remain uninsured or forced to pay for coverage they can't afford. According to their campaign websites, these are the candidates who support Medicare for All. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, Julian Castro, and Andrew Yang. However, in debate, some have flip-flopped or dodged the question when pressed on it. Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and Amy Klobuchar want a public option. It can get a little bit more complicated, though, when you look at their policy proposals. Elizabeth Warren was criticized for her vagueness when asked how she would pay for her Medicare for All plan in a Democratic debate last month. Will you raise taxes on the middle class for pay to pay for it, yes or no? So I have made clear what my principles are here, and that is costs will go up for the wealthy and for big corporations and for hardworking middle class families, costs will go down. Afterwards, Warren released the most comprehensive proposal to date on health care policy. Let's look at how she'd structure her single payer plan. According to Warren, she insists taxes will not be raised on the middle class. $2 trillion in tax revenue would come from the top 1% of households in what she calls the wealth tax. She also proposes employers who currently pay private health care companies would switch over to paying the government a similar amount, creating an estimated $8.8 trillion in revenue. She would also create a tax on stock trades, estimating $800 billion in revenue. Another frontrunner candidate, Joe Biden, has been more elusive about his health care plan. They do not have to buy in. You just said that. You just said that two minutes ago. You just said two minutes ago that they would have to buy in. You said they would have to buy in. to buy in. If you qualify for Are you forgetting what you said two minutes ago? We know the former vice president advocates for a public option and says he would improve on the Affordable Care Act. 
By keeping private insurance open and expanding on the ACA, Biden says this will give Americans more choice, reduce costs, and make the system less complex to navigate. Under his plan for the middle class, those making no more than $50,000 per year individually or $100,000 per year as a family, premiums would not exceed more than 8% of their income. Biden estimates this as a savings of around $750 per month. The plan focuses mostly on increasing tax credits and lowering deductibles while still keeping private insurance as an option. Pete Buttigieg thinks a public option, or as he calls it, Medicare for all who want it, is the most pragmatic way to achieve efficient and affordable health care in America. Medicare for all who want it means we take a version of Medicare and we make it available for every American. Yeah, I believe that this will be a better option than any of the private plans out there. I also believe Americans ought to be able to decide for themselves. He argues that his proposal would give the economy time to adjust as it moved towards Medicare for all. His plan would not get rid of private insurance. He estimates it would cost $1.5 trillion over a 10-year period and will be paid for by rolling back Donald Trump's tax cuts. Bernie Sanders is a longtime advocate for universal health care. He authored a bill for Medicare for All that was introduced in the House earlier this year. Medicare for All is comprehensive. It covers all health care needs for senior citizens. It will finally include dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. But you don't know Second that. of all, you don't know that, second Bernie. of all, we'll come I, to you in a second, I do know when I wrote the damn bill. Sanders is a consistent and vocal supporter of Medicare for All and has created a policy that would be similar to the bill he introduced which would increase taxes and implement a single-payer system over the course of four years. In his bill, there'd be a gradual expansion of Medicare to younger Americans and those with disabilities until it eventually covered everyone. There would be a 7.5 payroll tax on employers, a 4% individual income tax, and an array of taxes on the top 1%. Healthcare is certainly the most debated policy in the 2020 race, but whether voters want a complete overhaul to our healthcare system or a gradual change to a public option remains to be seen. Until next time, I'm Morgan Stevens, and this is The Ballot Box.